Let us study tree fodders now. Normally, the field fodder crops produce lower yield in hot summer. Situation will be still worse in drought years. Perennial tree fodders can compensate the shortage. Hence, it is advised to grow leguminous fodder bushes and trees along the fence on the buns and in barren portions of the farm. These deep-rooted plants can give fodder round the year without irrigation. This is Subabur, introduced in the 80s. This is the most popular and the best tree fodder. Subabul is an agroforestry tree species popular even for green manuring, firewood and wood pulp for the industry. It comes up well in low rainfall areas and grows very slowly in heavy rainfall areas. Herbage from the big Subabul tree has a negative substance called mimosine which may create problems in pregnant animals. Hence keep on lopping the plant at 5 to 6 feet for fodder. It withstands repeated lopping, harvest the branches before flowering, otherwise it may grow like a weed on the farm by self-seeding. Subabul is suitable for leaf meal production also. This is Calliandra, a leguminous plant species from Indonesia. This is useful for fodder, green manuring and firewood. Calliandra is a soft, palatable and proteinaceous fodder. It is multiplied by seeds. It withstands repeated lopping and is available for cutting three to four times a year. However, continuous feeding of Calliandra on a large scale will create infertility in dairy animals. Hence, restricted to five kilograms per animal per day. Gliricidia is another common leguminous fodder, rich in protein. It is seen growing along the fences and buns of the farms. The stem is thick and hard, which needs chopping before feeding. Gliricidia, just cut, has some bad odor disliked by the animals. Hence, wilt it for some time and feed. It needs a few days for the animals to like feeding Gliricidia. Sesbenia is another proteinaceous and palatable fodder. This is popular as a support and shade plant for beetle vines and also as a windbreaker in banana plantations. It withstands repeated lopping and gives out good regrowth. Regular irrigation gives higher yield of fodder. Likewise, mulberry is also a popular green fodder in its traditional bells. Stem is hard and chopping is necessary before feeding. However, continuous feeding of mulberry on a large scale will lead to infertility and low milk yield. Hence, Restrict it to 2 to 3 kilograms per animal per day. Traditionally, there are many tree fodders in use for sheep and goat. Bahunya is one among them. This will not produce seeds. Multiplication is by planting stem cuttings. Likewise, rain tree, an avenue tree planted on the roadside, is also a good leguminous fodder species. Buffaloes like the tender leaves of this rain tree very much. Abundantly available pods of this tree can also be fed to the animals. Melia is another popular fodder tree in the villages. Tender leaves and fruits are given to sheep, goat and other cattle. It withstands repeated lopping. This popular agroforestry tree grows very fast. Apart from these, jackfruit is one more nutritious fodder. Leaves, tender fruits and ripened fruits may be fed on a small scale. Likewise, herbage and fruits of fig is also in use as fodder. 5 kg of tree fodder is recommended per animal per day. In traditional Arakanat area, leaf sheath is used as fodder. It is chopped dried and fed to the animals. Farmers' experience indicates the improvement of milk fat by feeding areca nut leaf sheath. However, feeding the wet sheath may create problems in mastication since it has a thin upper layer like plastic. Likewise, cocoa farmers feed cocoa fruit rind to the dairy animals after extracting the beans inside. We can conclude 
that without using green, nutritious, monocot and dicot fodders, dairying cannot be a viable profession. Fodder crops play a vital role in the successful continuation of dairy units despite the sharp price hike of cattle feeds.